Alright, I'm back with the next installment in the ultimate guide to DaVinci Resolve keyboard shortcuts. This is part 2, speed and retime. I apologize this took a while but that's how life is at the moment. Today we will continue to work in the edit page and look at the speed and retime controls using the same keyboard shortcuts as before. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a link in the description below with a link to my custom keyboard shortcuts. Go to that link and download the keyboard shortcuts for DaVinci Resolve. I have an in-depth video tutorial explaining how to use them in the media, cut and the edit page. I recommend watching that video first and then come back to this video as this is part 2 and a little bit more advanced. Okay, let's get started. Here in the edit page, let's hide the media pool by hitting tab and the inspector by shift tab. We don't need those. I shall expand my timeline a bit. Here I have a clip at 120 frames a second. I have changed the frame rate to 23.976 which is my project settings. The first keyboard shortcut for today is the letter R. This brings up the change clip speed. Here you can change your clip speed or frame rate. You also have the option to reverse speed and capture a freeze frame. This was shot at 120 frames a second and I want to play this in real time. I can simply change this to 500% and now my clip will play in real time. I'm going to undo that, that's Control Z. Go back into change speed. As you saw, ripple timeline was unchecked in the previous setting. I will do this once again, set it to 500% and make sure ripple timeline is checked. Watch these two clips over here. So now my clip is shortened and it ripples everything in the timeline. I will undo that once again. We are back at 120 frames a second. Next, I want to show you what most people teach and then I'll show you the way I do it. We're going to hit Control R or Command R on a Mac. This brings up the speed change bar. You can change the clip of the speed by moving your cursor in this top bar, either here at the end or in the beginning. You see this double-sided arrow pop up. Grab it and you can change the speed of the clip to whatever you want. You'll also notice next to this 100%, there's this little arrow. Once you click that, you can add speed points along the entire clip and you can change its speed to these fixed percentages. Let's add a speed point. Let's say I want my clip to slow down here. So I'll add a speed point here. Now, mind you, this is not the way I actually do it. This is the way most people do it and add a speed point here. If you look carefully, you have a pin over here up top, one over here as well, and one down here and here. So the lower points or keyframes, you can consider these as keyframes, will change the position of where your speed ramp is going to happen or the speed change is going to happen and you can move this around. The top two handles are like your speed change bar, which actually change the speed of the clip. So you can speed it up or slow it down, right? So I'll bring this back to, let's say 97%. I want to speed the beginning of this clip a lot, as well as the end of the clip. Let me zoom in onto this clip. So we'll go from 474 to 100%. To thousand percent. All right, let's see what that looks like. And it slows down abruptly. And then over here, speeds up abruptly to thousand percent. Now this is an abrupt speed change from 474 to 100 and then to thousand percent. To fix that, we need to get into the curves. Control Shift and R, and that brings up the retime frame. This is not retime speed. However, you can make all your changes right here by clicking the first point that correlates to this here and hitting this icon that creates a smooth transition from here and you can do the same thing for the second keyframe and curve it as well. Most of the time you would see tutorials where they tell you to switch from retime frame to retime speed and yes that would be ideal. However, this is an issue with DaVinci where there is no shortcut key to go straight into the retime speed curve. You can only go into the curves or into retime frame. As you can see, I cannot see the top ends of my curve here. You need to click on the line and then either on the left or the right, you can zoom in or zoom out and make sure your curve is within view. So this is in retime speed. You can increase or decrease the speed at which this ramp happens for both keyframes. And now you have a smooth transition. So from 474, it transitions into 100% and then from 100% to 1000%. All right, this is the way most people do it. Now let's look at the way I would do this. 
So now let's reset all the speed changes. You can press Ctrl, Alt and R and that resets everything. However, remember, if you had shortened your clip or cut your clip from a larger clip, this will reset everything. So as you can see, my clip is showing the beginning of my original clip. So rather than doing it that way, you can go right click, remove attributes, you can hit retime effects and ripple sequence if you need to do that. I don't need to do it in this case. I'm just going to hit apply. And now my clip is reset. I can hide the retime speed curve by going to Control Shift R and hide my speed change bar by Control R. You can also access the curves by going down here, clicking this icon. All right, so I want my clip to start in very fast and somewhere here I wanted to slow down, right? So I'm gonna hit Control R to bring up my speed change bar so I can see what's going on. Control Shift R to bring up my curves. I'm gonna press Alt and click right there. Click my keyframe again and hit this button to make it a smooth curve. I want it to be slow till here and then speed up again. So I'm going to press Alt and click again. Click my keyframe, smooth it. So far I've made no changes to the speed. I'm going to turn on my retime speed curve so you can see it as well what's happening. Right, so there's no change on this. However, I'm going to continue working on this. I don't really need to go into my retime speed when I'm setting this up. So 100%, 100% and 100%. I want this to speed up. Uh, let's say five six hundred percent there this at hundred percent and I'm going to speed up the remaining Towards the end. Let's say another twelve hundred percent. So my retime frame is right here this curve. This is my retime speed. It's doing the exact same thing So if you want to see it, I'll just click on it and I can Just increase the percentage right there without going into my retime speed curve which requires an additional step and a few clicks using the retime frame we can achieve the exact same thing so that's my shot slows down and speeds up and done as simple as that now let's look at a couple of other clips and see how we can make it a transition from one clip to the other using a speed ramp these are lion cubs in the gear national forest in india and he walks over and he goes over to his dad and he plays a little bit so i want my transition to happen let's say from here when the camera is panning right I'm going to hit E to trim to end. And then here I want the clip to start right there. I'm going to hit Q, trim to start. I want my speed transition to happen like in between these two clips. Control R, Control Shift R. The same thing over here. Control R, Control Shift R. And I want my transition to be just a second. I'm going to hit Shift and left arrow key to move one second back. I'm going to press Alt and click. I'm going to zoom in a bit more. I can use this down arrow key to set a percentage. So let's say I want to make it 800%. So that's easy. Let's delete the space in between. Shift and right arrow key to jump ahead one second. I can press Alt and click. Click this, smooth my curve. Oh, I forgot to smooth my curve here. So let's smooth that in. And I'm going to set this to 800% as well. Now we have a smooth transition between these two clips. I can always zoom in further and refine this. I can increase the speed even further. It needs to be zoomed in a lot more than that. So it's snapping. I can turn off snapping by hitting N and increase the speed there like that. And now we have a fast transition. I like the one second more. You get the idea. Shift Z to fit everything on screen. I can hit Ctrl R to hide the bar. Ctrl Shift R to hide my curves. Same thing here. Ctrl R, Ctrl Shift R here as well. Here's a quick bonus tip. If you want to see your curves and all the changes you've made in there, you can hit Shift C and you can go down and select anything you want in here. But this is an additional step. So for example, in speed, you can see the changes that we made over here. You can zoom out. So that's our speed ramp right there. And Shift C to hide the curves once again. Just remember, if you want to remove the retime effects, rather than using the reset, that is Control Alt R. If you have cut the clip in any way, it's best to go into Remove Attributes. The shortcut is Control Shift and X, and you can just remove retime effects, and you're done. And now that retime effect is gone.
Shift Z to fit everything on screen. Here's a couple of extra keyboard shortcuts for you. If you ever want to find where this clip is in your media pool, you can hit Alt and the F key and you will find it in your media pool. And if you want to find it on the computer in your finder or in the Windows Explorer, you can hit Control, Shift and F and that'll bring up the Explorer with the file. In this video, we did not talk about optical flow and slowing down your clips. And there are a ton of videos available online for that. The ideal way is to use optical flow and if you want to get it even better, you can use optical flow with speed warp. Every time it's set to project settings, you can change that over here to optical flow and your motion estimation down here into sp and speed warp. However, if this is something that you do often, I would leave this at project settings. Go into our project settings by hitting shift nine, scroll down under master settings, and down here is your frame interpolation. The retime process, you can set it to optical flow instead of standard faster, enhance better. For some reason, the speed warp doesn't appear in here. You would need to do that in the inspector, but you can leave the default to optical flow and enhance better and see how that works. And that's it for this video. This covers all my shortcuts for the media cut and the edit page. I do have shortcuts for the color page, but I'm still finalizing them. Once I'm done with that, I'll make a video and update the file on my Buy Me A Coffee page and you can download the latest version of the shortcuts. Until then, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.